Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Last summer, I bought a DNA sequencer at a surplus auction for under $100. Now, at the time, this seemed like a really cool gadget, but what can we actually do with it? Terror stalks the streets as a scientist's human transplantation experiment runs amok. As it turns out, it's not actually that easy to clone your own army of mutants. This is a device from 2009, which to me seems like just yesterday, but is actually over a decade ago. Man, I feel old now. Anyway, science has moved on, and there are easier, cheaper, and more effective ways to get DNA information now. There are all-in-one DNA labs on Kickstarter, and there are homemade devices on Instructables, so you can probably do it a lot more easily than with this gigantic machine. My giant robot sequencer might be just as extinct as the dinosaurs. In addition, the original maker of this unit seems to no longer exist. They were bought out by another company and kind of vanished. That means that some of the chemicals and supplies needed to operate this platform aren't produced any longer. I did speak with some experts, including other YouTubers like DIY Biotech and a few scientists I know. They said that while there are some chemicals and supplies still available, they aren't cheap. It turns out that the smallest quantity of DNA primer needed for Sanger sequencing costs over $400. That's almost five times what I paid for this unit. My YouTube channel just isn't big enough to subsidize something like that. To add even more complexity, this DNA sequencer doesn't actually take a random DNA sample and produce a result. It's just a step in the middle of the whole DNA analysis process. I would need a bunch more lab equipment to do the precursor steps and the after-processing steps to get anything out of this. Now, I'm not saying I regret buying this thing. As I said in the first video, there's definitely $85 worth of spare parts in here. The mechanical electronic systems work, and I might be able to make a 3D printer or an engraver or a router or something else out of it. Or I could tear it all apart and have a lot of cool spare parts. This is the Save It For Parts channel, after all. The whole justification for this channel is to reuse old, obsolete, broken, or otherwise worthless or unwanted stuff that might otherwise end up in a landfill. Just because the DNA sequencer is too outdated to bring back the dinosaurs, it doesn't mean I can't make it into a robot dinosaur. <laughs> Now, before I start tearing this thing apart, I did want to give one more shout out and see if anyone out there is interested in it. If there's a lab or a hobbyist who could actually use this for its intended purpose, I'd prefer that over parting it out. I'm open to ideas and suggestions. Uh, since I paid under $100 for it, I'm not looking for a profit. Uh, I'd like it to go to somebody that can actually use it. However, it does weigh about 200 pounds with all the computer stuff, everything in there, and it only fits on a pallet. So you're not going to be able to ship it by U.S. mail or U.P.S. It's going to have to go freight, which is not cheap. It would be a lot easier if there's somebody nearby that would be able to pick it up in Minneapolis. That would be cheaper and easier for everybody. For now, I'm keeping the thing in my basement, as I have tons of other projects on the to-do list, and I'm not in a hurry to tear it apart. But one of these days, I'll get tired of looking at it, I'll get tired of having the basement full of junk, and I'll get out a screwdriver and make it into smaller pieces. If someone out there watching is interested, please shoot me an email and we can discuss it. Or if you have another idea beyond the 3D printer conversion, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to see what other unwise purchases I make at surplus sales and what, if anything, I do with them. We'll see you next time.